on YouTube. Today on The Naughty Librarian, I'm going over some of my favorite spooky book recs. So it's Halloween month. I know some of you may be looking for that excellent Halloween book that's full of spooky delights. And you just don't know which ones to pick. So these are a few of my favorites that I've read probably within the last year or so because I want to keep this a fresh list. So let's just get into some spooky recommendations. I'm gonna start off strong with Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. Honestly, this book has blown my mind. I read it earlier this year and it was so good. <laughs> like I read it all in one day. It's fairly short so you could read it all in one day. And I closed the book right after I finished the last page and I immediately said out loud, fuck that's good. <laughs> so I had like this visceral reaction of oh my gosh this is so good. There is an entity that if one sees it, you go insane and kill yourself and others. So, scary world. Hence, you have people walking around in blindfolds so they don't accidentally see this thing and go crazy and kill themselves and others. So basically, you now have this world where you're blind. <laughs> you know, there is a caveat of horror stories that says, you know, the scariest thing in the horror story is the thing you can't see. So they really took that trope and ran with it here. And it's like, what can't you see? And you never actually get a description of what the monster looks like because you're not supposed to see it. <laughs> and they could have stopped there and it still would have been a fun, scary book, even if they didn't like delve deeper into like a deep character study. But they did that here and it was so juicy. I think the main theme that we're supposed to get out of this is that what is actually scary in the apocalypse. Is it the apocalypse? Is it the monster? Or is it you? Are you the person who's scary? Because I feel like that's like the interesting question they're asking in this. It's not just like, oh, how do we avoid the scary monster? It's like, who does the scary monster turn you into? So right there, it's just like, oh, that is an interesting concept to look at for a horror story. The horror is inside. It's very internalized. So yes, it's very fascinating and it's like gets really deep into like an emotional like existential crisis. It was actually a very interesting horror story and I loved it and it was creepy as hell and I, it stuck with me for a long time. Next spooky book is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say this is a horror story, but it is about a serial killer, which I feel goes with the Halloween spooky vibes. <laughs> so this is about Alex. She is a teenage girl who is also a serial killer. She kills uh, bad men. Essentially, this is also a really in-depth look at what rape culture is and how pervasive it is in society. And then Alex kind of becomes like a, a Dexter figure, a vigilante of sorts, where she's like, oh, this guy murdered that girl and like raped her, but he got away with it. So I'm going to go murder him now. And it's actually kind of easy. So we kind of follow Alex, who is basically a sociopath but trying to figure out things. Like she's not maybe a complete sociopath, she does have emotions and a sense of right and wrong. She's just like the sociopath that hunts other sociopaths. So she's a very interesting character and she's a teenage girl, which makes her even creepier. But we are following Alex and how like her, how her thought process is in these kills she commits. She basically kills bad guys, but what does that mean for her soul? It's actually another internalized horror story. So I think I have a theme going now. <laughs> it might not necessarily be a horror story, but it definitely is like a feminist horror story. It has lots and lots of horrible things happening that are scary, that are involving rape culture. They have a serial killer. I think it's an excellent Halloween pick that's also very thought-provoking and interesting. And I think Alex is a very interesting character, even though she is a sociopath. Speaking of feminist horror, let's talk about Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. It's almost impossible to describe the plot because it's so weird. <laughs> the best way to describe it is that it is feminist horror. So it is um, basically the bad guy is the patriarchy. And we're basically assigning a actual monster to represent that. So it is very much feminist horror and it's so fascinating. Basically there's this island called Saw Kill and it's kind of sentient and there's a monster that lives on it that eats girls and so this island is sentient so it kind of gives powers to these three girls to help it defeat the monster 
I don't want to get into it because it's so weird and hard to describe because it's also like metaphysical at points. It's very much like one of those artsy horror movies where you're watching it and you're like, this is amazing. I have no idea what I'm watching though, but it's amazing. <laughs> it's kind of like that at points. I mean, it's kind of like atmospheric and lyrical and like metaphysical and it's, it's really different and interesting and it blew my mind with how good it is. Ugh, so good. It is feminist, it is queer, it is horror, and yeah, it's all very artsy-fartsy, but like, good. <laughs> it's like, kind of like those horror movies, where it's so weird, and you don't know what's happening, but it's really good. Like, 2001, there you go. 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's not necessarily a horror movie, but there are things that happen in it that are horrific. But like at the end of it, it's so open-ended and metaphysical and weird and you're like, this is so weird, but it's amazing. That's this. That's, that's the best way to describe it. So <laughs> if you're into that kind of horror, definitely recommend. Next spooky book is Contagion by Aaron Bowman. And I'll tell you right now, this one is legit terrifying. <laughs> it is technically YA, but doesn't feel like YA. Like these characters were all... 10 years older than they are in the book, like, it would have been an adult book. Let's just say that. They're in the same situations as adult characters would have been in. And uh, the best way to just sum up the book would be uh, it's space zombies. There you go. Space zombies, guys. <laughs> and um, it is terrifying space zombies. Oh my gosh. Like, the, the level of horror in here that, that she pulls from every page is kind of impressive. I definitely was very impressed. I feel like though, I will, I'll say this, there is a sequel to this called um, Immunity is a sequel. And here's the thing, I don't think it needs a sequel. Like I felt like this should have been a standalone book and I would have been happier with it because I haven't read the sequel yet because I'm like, I just want this to be a standalone. But that's for you to decide. Just in case you want more story, it is available to you. But yes, yeah, Space Zombies, genuinely terrifying horror movie tropes like you're trapped in an enclosed space this is in space you know spaceships and stuff you're trapped with zombies <laughs> in a very small space and you know they're like crawling up the like the, the 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 vents and stuff and you're like ah they're coming for me and it's like it's very claustrophobic and horrifying and bloody and gory and like legit creepy and terrifying so if you were like are sensitive I would say to gore <laughs> like probably skip this one but if you want like a good scary book that's like a good scary movie honestly like I'd recommend Contagion Space Zombies like I don't really need to say any more than that since I just took it to 11 with Contagion I want to bring it back down a bit so I have How to Hang a Witch by Adriana Mather this one is much more a manageable level of spooky, I'd say. <laughs> Not as scary as Contagion, so if you're sensitive to it, this one might be better for you. This is, uh, you know, it's definitely YA, but I read it as an adult and I still enjoyed it, but it is for YA, just go into that knowing this. But it's kind of dealing with um, the Salem Witch Trial, but in modern day times. So it's not like a reimagining of the Salem Witch Trials, it's a continuation of them. Witchcraft is real, and the witches that were killed in the trials were witches, and now their descendants are still here. And there's also ghosts, and like evil witches coming back and like possessing people, and all kinds of mayhem involving like the Salem Witch Trials. So you're starting off with the Witch Trials, which is already like horrible and scary. And then you're like taking it up to modern day and like how this repercussions of that is still affecting everybody. So it's definitely not as scary because it is for YA. So I would recommend it if you're kind of sensitive to scary things because it does have ghosts and witches and there is a lot of peril involving like being possessed by witches. So it does go there, but it's definitely for a younger audience. So you're not gonna have to like sleep with a light on at night and you'll be fine. But you know what? I did enjoy it. I had fun reading it. The main character, her name is Sam, and she, I genuinely liked her snark. She's a very snarky character. So if you want like a snarky heroine having a deal with witches, I'm <laughs> like, this is the book for you. Definitely fun, but it's like lighter on the horror scale. Let's bring this back. We're gonna go back to classic horror. And for that, I'm picking The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. 
This is kind of a reimagining of the Frankenstein story, but told from the perspective of Elizabeth. In case you do not know the Frankenstein story, Elizabeth was uh, Victor's childhood friend. They grew up together and they were engaged. And, you know, things didn't end well for Elizabeth in the original story, but this is kind of a reimagining of that. <laughs> so in this story, we start off when they're children and Elizabeth is like, you know, little, little orphan girl. And then this very wealthy family is like, oh, we need to find a companion for our creepy kid because he's a creep and we're scared of him. Hey, little girl, you're our son's best friend now. We own you. <laughs> so it starts off already in, you know, questionable kind of evil, I would say, origins here. And then it doesn't get better from there because we all know Victor Frankenstein. Like, even if you haven't read Frankenstein, you know of the character. You can get a sense of who this character was megalomaniac for example is a good word to describe victor they took like the victor from the book that could also have like sympathetic characteristics and they put him in here and they're like fuck sympathy <laughs> so i kind of enjoyed that because victor like i don't think we're supposed to empathize with victor i think we're supposed to understand why he did what he did but not forgive him which is, I, I think we should have got out of Frankenstein, frankly. So this book kind of does that. Like, Victor is not a forgivable character in this, but we understand why he's doing what he's doing. So I think it corrects some things that may have been problems in the original text. But like I said, this focus is mainly on Elizabeth and her journey and how she is stuck with Victor, who is insane, and like his house is full of body parts and she's like the fuck bro like I need to hide all this because you're gonna go to prison like I have to protect you even though you're a sociopath and you horrify me it's still my job to protect you so it's like this weird damaged codependent relationship they have so it's like a lot of more psychological horror I mean there also is you know monsters in it because it's Frankenstein but um it's definitely a much more interesting take on it it's a fresh take I'll say that and it's Kirsten White. I mean, she's incredible. I've read everything Kirsten White has ever written. They're all good. <laughs> like, I can't really pick one that I think is particularly bad. But yeah, this one's fun. It's actually really short. I think it's only, it's under 300 pages, I believe. Yeah, it's under 300 pages. You can read it real quick. And it's definitely really fun. It's technically YA, but I feel like it's fine for adult audiences. It's kind of like a crossover book, I'd say. Like, it's fine for YA, but I think adults would really like it too. And also it's Frankenstein, you know, like, it's perfect for Halloween. It's classic. Classic horror. What would Halloween be without some good old vampires? So for my vampire pick, I am going to say The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. This is kind of actually an interesting take on vampires because this is basically a world where everyone knows vampires exist. We all know. And so the world is dealt with this by inventing cold towns. So essentially it is a town walled off and all the vampires live there. So humans can live in the regular world and not have to worry about it. And the vampires go live in the cold town. The thing is, there are humans who are stupid. And as soon as you go into a cold town, you are never allowed to leave it. Because they don't trust you're not infected with shit. So there's like all of that. The people trying to get into cold towns. People trying to get out of cold towns. But it's also a good vampire story. So we're following this girl named Tana. Her story kind of begins at this party. She wakes up the next morning and everyone has been horribly murdered by vampires. Oh shit. <laughs> so hence now she is in some shit. She has found out she has been grazed with a vampire bite. Oh no, I might be turning into a vampire. I have to get to a cold town. Oh no, all this kind of vampire spookiness, being in the cold town, trying to get out of the cold town again. And you know what? The ending of this is not necessarily a happy ending. I'll say that. So it points for that is definitely unique, whereas it's not everyone lived happily ever after. It kind of just ends in an open-ended kind of way where you can kind of make up your own conclusion, but it's definitely not in a happy way. So it has that going for it where it has a fascinating ending and it's vampires and it's like action-packed and it's getting into like vampire society so it's definitely fun and I would say good if you're like kind of sensitive to horror because it's there's gore and there's you know vampire shit going on here but it's not so horrific that you need a nightlight so I recommend. If you're a horror fan who loves the atmosphere it involves and the eeriness of the environment, then I'm going to recommend House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Craig. 
because this one the setting is almost a character in the story. It's so eerie and interesting how it's like involving this island. They have a lot of burial customs here and they really get into all of those at times. It's a retelling of the 12 dancing princesses and let's just say these 12 dancing princesses are just dying right and left. <laughs> so there's a lot of funerals in the book. You get to find out about their funerary practices. And the culture that she invented for these people that live on this island and like the sea gods and like how they interpret to death and like how, you know, the salt water and how that acts with it. It's all very fascinating and it's a very creepy, eerie place to be setting a, I don't know, I think it's a ghost story the best way you can describe it. It has ghosts in it that are creepy. It also deals with madness, like am I crazy or there actually are ghosts? I don't know which one. So that's like a lot of the horror here, it's in your head. So I kind of like those type of horror stories I'm finding out. I like internalized horror. I learned something today. <laughs> it's about madness and ghosts and just all over eeriness and curses and creepy factors. So it's definitely fun if you're like an atmospheric horror person. You want that creepy environment. This one is like aces for a creepy environment. Is it the best book I've read this year? No, but it gets A plus for eeriness. All right, so those are just a few spooky books for Halloween. I hope I've helped you pick something out for your perfect Halloween read. So if you're interested in any of these ones, let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite pick of these books in particular. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye!